Hello again. I'm back for my second update. Yeah, second update. As you can see, it's gotten a little less bright and cheery here. I live in Seattle, so this time of year things tend to get a little bit dark. Uh, but it's October, so Halloween is going to be coming up at the end of the month, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, quick update uh, for the, as the first part, because I think that's probably what's most interesting to anyone who might be watching my videos. So Kanji, I am almost done with RTK. I have about a month left to go. I guess that doesn't sound <laughs> like I'm almost done, but from at the rate that I'm going at it, that's almost done. I'm well over three-fourths of the way finished. I'm at over 1,800 Kanji, I think like at 1,816 or 1,860 or 70, something like that. Anyway, I'm really getting sick of Kanji, really looking forward to being finished. I think in my last update I said that being over halfway finished, kind of being over the hump, things started feeling easier, and that definitely did not last. <laughs> it started feeling like quite a grind again, but now I have the light at the end of the tunnel, so I'm excited. I'm excited to be finished with this, at least uh, the learning new kanji. The reviews aren't so bad, it's mainly repeatedly coming up with stories for new kanji every day that's starting to get a little annoying. So. Comprehension-wise, listening comprehension, watching things, I'm still doing that. I haven't been as good at doing it reliably as I have uh, up to this point, but still been pretty good. And you know, just gonna get back up on the horse, and or I have gotten back up on the horse. Just gonna keep going, and it's still fun. Still enjoying watching anime and Japanese TV without subtitles. My comprehension is getting better slowly. I'm finding that I'm starting to have difficulty estimating percentages for how much I understand because there's this really weird kind of in-between area where I'm not sure how much of it is coming from the language and how much is how much of it is coming from context if that makes sense like I might catch a word here or there or subconsciously my brain picks up on something in a sentence that lets me get a pretty good idea of what's going on but it's not clear to me how much of that is from the context, how much of it is it from comprehension, which I know sounds kind of weird, but uh, I suspect this is a fairly common experience for people taking this approach to learning languages. Maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> I don't really know what percentage to put on my current listening comprehension, but I definitely notice it getting better, albeit it is still slow. So that's it for updates as to my status. Um, I guess the next thing is just talking about other things that I've been doing. So because the kanji is kind of a grind and I'm getting sort of impatient, like I want to move on to the next step, I want to start doing like sentence cards and stuff like that, I basically decided I'm gonna let myself start doing sentence cards but only playfully, by which I mean I'm playing around with how I might do sentence cards but not treating any of the stuff that I'm doing right now as actual study. Like, I'm still going about it, sort of, as if I am, but if I don't do my reviews every day, I don't really care. If I don't make cards every day, I don't really care. I'm just trying to figure out how I want the cards to work for myself. So, the first thought that I had was, especially early on, doing entire sentences might be a little hard, because any sentence that I'm gonna run across is probably gonna be, like, somewhere between 70 to 90 percent stuff that I don't know and that's gonna make it hard to I'm gonna forget the flashcards really really easily that way and just have really terrible retention so I started playing with the idea of just using individual words at first and focusing on things like nouns and verbs and adjectives I mean I guess those are all kind of well, that's, okay, words, <laughs> as opposed to grammatical constructs, I guess is what I mean. And so I started doing that, and the first thing that I realized was that having a, being reminded of the context of when I first heard it is really, really useful. So if I heard, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example, but I'm just going to make one up. So taberu like to eat. If I first heard that in a context where some character was being force-fed gravy-soaked 
ice cream, I don't know, uh, then, like, keeping that context in mind, it's like, oh, taberu, taberu, you know, like, <laughs> eat this, um, like, that's going to help that stick a lot more. Moreover, uh, what I ended up finding, so I started, what I started out doing because of that was including the context uh, as part of the answer side of the flashcard. So it would, it would just be the word itself on the one side and the five, you know, said show, and it flips the other side that has a description of the context, like, oh, this is the show that it was in, this is kind of what was happening in the scene. And that was helpful, but I still found that it wasn't as helpful as what I really wanted. And so what I actually started doing, and this has ended up being the most helpful, is actually writing out the full <laughs> Japanese sentence, but on the other side of the card. So I'll have the one word, right? But then I have on the other side of the card, the full sentence that it was used in to remind me of that context to kind of refresh my memory. Um, and that's turned out to be, I think, the most useful. And it also then gives me a reminder of, for example, like what particles are used with a verb, for example, how you actually would use that word in a sentence. And I see that every time that I review the card. So I think I'm probably going to stick with that at first. I do eventually want to move on to proper sentence cards. And if I can make a, a full sentence, or if I can't take a full sentence, right, and put that in the card, I will do that, assuming that it's pretty much all stuff that I know except for the one thing that I'm trying to pull out of it. But I think this probably makes sense as kind of like a beginning point. Uh, but we'll see. I'm still playing around with that. I still have like about a month before I actually start proper sentence cards, so to speak. So I'll, I'll kind of see how things go. Uh, another thing that I started doing was uh, there's a graded reader app for Android uh, that I've been using. And it was really pleasing to discover that probably the first like three stories in the graded reader were not particularly difficult for me to understand. There's like a few words here and there that I ne needed to look up, but by and large, like once I looked up the words, then I could understand the story, which was really cool. So <laughs> my listening comprehension, uh, assuming that I have the vocabulary, apparently seems to be at about the level of like a three-year-old or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, so that was, that's was that been useful, and I think I'm going to keep going with that as well as kind of like another method of practicing listening comprehension and building up some vocabulary. And it's also motivating to actually listen to something that is, I mean, I said graded readers, but it also comes with an audio component. And so it's nice to have some motivation that kind of comes with actually understanding something fully like that's very motivating and kind of helps motivate me to keep going so yeah so that's uh one of the things that i've been doing the other thing that i wanted to bring up is just how you use anki not from a like the, the design of the cards that you create but in terms of how you s set up the settings of anki how you use the buttons and anki the answer buttons and anki so one of the things that I've been playing with, an idea, an idea that I had based on listening to some of the videos from Steve Kaufman, who is like, you should definitely look up Steve Kaufman's channel. Uh, his videos are redundant because he has tons of them and he <laughs> largely keeps saying the same things over and over again. But he's also really motivating. He's just awesome to watch. I love the guy. Um, if I ever meet him in person, I'm going to give him a big hug, assuming he's into that kind of thing. Um, but uh, anyway, but one of the points that he made, he has this one video that I'll, I'll link to in the description that uh, he talks about learning languages as, he makes a metaphor to the way that they pour sake in Japan, like if you go out to drink with people, which is they have the, the sake cup, but then like a, I don't remember what it's called, but like the box, right? They put it in and they pour the sake and it overflows, right? And goes into the, the box. And he was making an analogy that learning languages is like that, right? He says, let the words overflow, which I thought was really cool. And the idea is you're going to forget most of the stuff that you take in, right? And that's actually normal. That's okay. And you're supposed to, right? Learning language is about forgetting things. Don't worry about forgetting things. And so thinking about that, I kind of started thinking that maybe 
using Anki, at least with respect to the sentence cards, less as a flashcard application and more of as like a scheduled reminders application might be a reasonable way to go about doing things. And the idea behind that then, and what I've been playing with, is whenever I see a, whenever I'm doing reviews and the card comes up, I do try to figure it out, right? Uh, without immediately looking to the other side of the card, but I only spend like a very small amount of time, like maybe a few seconds, and when it doesn't click, then I immediately look at the other side of the card, and if, and then I basically treat that as like a reminder, right? I'm being reminded of what it means, and regardless of whether I was able to recall it just from the prompt or not, I answer good unless I just kind of feel like I want to be reminded more often, right? So if I feel like I'm like, oh, I'd kind of like to see this card again, then I'll say uh, again, right? Uh, or bad or whatever it's labeled. I just do swipe, so I don't actually remember which, because <laughs> I, I do all my reviews on my phone, so actually I don't remember which uh, buttons are labeled which. Anyway, but point is, uh, not treating it as a I need to remember these, but treating it as like this is scheduled reminders. And what I found, and this has really been really interesting for me, is that there are cards that I will forget the first couple of times. And even though I'm I'm saying good on the card, and therefore the intervals are getting longer and longer, a lot of the time I come around to actually remembering what it means again, uh, which is kind of suspicious in that it, it's making me think that the the way that Anki thinks about how memory works while a useful approximation uh, is not totally accurate. And, and I get, I mean, that should be obvious to begin with, right? Because it, you know, the human brain is complex. And it's not like I actually thought that Anki <laughs> was like exactly modeling the human brain or anything, but because um, the, the algorithms are and the formulas are very simple. But nevertheless, there are aspects, maybe important aspects of how human memory works and memorizing things work that is not accounted for. And so maybe this approach might be interesting. Anyway, so that's one thing I thought. But what was really interesting to me is that not long after that, maybe a couple of weeks after I started doing that, Matt versus Japan, which is another channel that I find really useful, YouTube channel I find really useful. Uh, he posted a video about cr like what are actually optimal Anki settings or spaced repetition settings for trying to learn a language. And he had this great insight uh, that I'm a little bit jealous that I didn't think of first, right? <laughs> but apparently no one else did either. And Matt's a super smart guy, so like, I don't feel bad, but it was like, ah, nuts. It seems like something I could have thought of. Anyway, uh, his insight was this. Most people, the way that they're approaching using Anki, including himself up to this point, was to think about minimizing the number of cards that you forget, right? So you're, you're trying to make sure you remember as many of the cards that you put in as possible, which means you want your retention rate to be as high as possible for the amount of time that you put into studying with Anki. So to put that in a nutshell, the thing that matters is the relative, I guess kind of your retention rate per hour that you put studying in, if that makes sense. And his insight was that that's that doesn't actually make sense for language learning. For something like, and he uses, uses the example of like a medical student where like, it's really important you remember everything because uh, you might kill people accidentally or make them sick otherwise. But uh, in the case of language learning, and this is very in keeping with Steve Kaufman's Let the Words Overflow video, what matters is absolutely not how many words you forget you can forget as many words or grammar points or whatever as you want. It doesn't matter. What matters is how many you remember, right? And that at first that sounds counterintuitive, right? Because like, well, if you're forget forgetting more then clearly you're uh, not remembering as many, but it turns out that's not necessarily true, right? Which is to say, uh, so if you're trying to minimize how many you forget, right? So if this is how many you remember, this is how many you forget. If you're trying to minimize 
uh, how many you forget, you might actually be kind of bringing both of them down, right? Like this. It's like you're making sure that you're not uh, you're not forgetting anything, but you're also you have less time basically to learn new ones because you're spending so much time on reviews to make sure you don't forget these ones, right? But if you allow yourself to forget more, right? If you're if you're saying like I'm okay with forgetting more words, then you can actually put more new cards in, right? And spend less time reviewing, and you can actually end up with a higher overall number of words that you're remembering, even though you're also forgetting more words, right? Because you're just putting more words into the system to begin with, right? And I, I'm saying words, but whatever you want to put on the cards. So he then figured out this, or tried, like worked out this formula based on kind of existing formulas uh, that are in Anki's documentation to figure out what are the optimal settings. And that's going to vary based on like your own personal retention rate, like how well you remember things. And even that varies from person to person depending on type of content and uh, how much effort they put in or tricks they use for memorizing and things like that. But whatever your personal re retention rate is, then the optimal uh, kind of uh, spacing is going to be different. So that's a really cool video. I got really interested in that. I'm like, oh, well, that's that's pretty fascinating. I wonder, like, I'd kind of like to validate this. Um, and uh, I have enough background in certain types of simulation work and software development that I was like, well, why don't I just write a program that simulates someone doing Anki for a year? And you can put in, like, all these different things, like the different Anki settings, uh, the person's personal retention rate, like, all this kind of stuff and then just see what happens over the course of a year and how many cards they end up like in total like accumulating. So I did that and I wrote up a uh, blog post and uh, anyway, I'll, I'll link to both of those in the description as well, uh, both the, the GitHub repo for the simulation. is kind of janky code because it's very quick and dirty for the most part, but nevertheless, might be interesting to look at for some people. Uh, and then also the blog post, which is more interesting because uh, it actually has the results. And I'll, I'll summarize the result very briefly, but if you want the detail, the details, definitely go look at the blog post. Uh, but the, the short version is that if you are just starting out and you don't have good data on what your personal retention rate is, uh, probably starting with a interval multiplier, which is one of Anki's settings, uh, starting with an interval multiplier of about 200% is probably pretty close to optimal. Like it's gonna get you very close to like the highest number of cards that you learn for amount of hours you spend studying uh, for a pretty wide range of personal retention rates. So uh, I'm gonna be doing that since I, uh, if you do have like good data on your personal retention rates, like you've already been doing Anki sentence cards for you know a few months so you can see what your retention rate generally is on like the mature cards. Um, then, you know, definitely use that and you can kind of dial in more exactly. But if you don't, then like I'd say, start at a 200% interval modifier and you can always kind of like tweak it from there. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, well, I I'm actually not going to be using the interval modifier because you can do the same thing, uh, in with other settings, but, um, but that's kind of the easy way to, to dial it in. So, uh... Yeah, it'll be interesting. The, the thing that I'm wondering about, though, is how that, how does that play in to my other idea of always hitting good and using it more as just scheduled reminders? And I don't know. I really don't know. So, I mean, maybe I could do some more simulations with that as well. But I guess the thing is, like, the... Okay, so here's the thing. The idea of just using Anki for reminders is based on the idea that the Anki algorithm isn't 100% modeling uh, how the human mind works. And the thing is, I don't know what the actual formulas for kind of accounting for that difference between reality and Anki is. And so trying to create a, a new simulation to see how that impacts things is uh, a little bit tricky because I don't know how to quantify it. You can't really simulate anything. You can't simulate things you can't quantify. So uh, so I don't know really how to approach that. So uh, 
so I might actually kind of give up on the idea of doing like the the good the always hit good thing but I, I don't know I don't know we'll see I'll play around with it for another month or so before I actually start doing things for real and uh, I'll report back uh, on the next the next video anyway so that's uh, it from update I guess I was kind of long and rambling um, but hope people got something out of it for the very few people <laughs> that I think even watch my videos uh, anyway, thanks so much. See you guys in a couple months.